Hey everyone, this is your host Stacy. I'm so glad you could join in with me today on this episode of Holy Spirit Soapbox. So this episode is one for the ones who feel too far gone. Like they have to be better, do more, feel more, spend more time, focus harder, whatever else you may have said that makes you feel like you're not quote unquote good enough, but you want to be. Does sound familiar to you? Well, if it does, let me just remind you that you are enough. Of course, we're all growing in Christ each and every day, and we all have much to learn and tons to experience with God. But let me just remind you that you don't have to do anything to be anything other than the one he made you to be. To put it in a worldly experience, Have you ever had your child, or any child really, tell you that they missed you while you were apart from them? If you haven't yet, I promise it'll both break your heart that you were apart from them too, and at the same exact time surpass any amount of love you thought you had for them before that exact moment. The fact that they thought of their own love for you, even if it was only for a split second of their day, and they just couldn't wait for the moment just to be in your presence again? That's it. Cue the waterworks. (laughs) Now imagine God, our daddy, when we go back to him, because he never leaves us, we're always the ones that do the walking away, and we tell him we've missed him, and we love him, and we couldn't wait for this one little moment just to be with him again. Now I can kind of start to remotely understand a small amount about the prodigal son or the parable of the lost sheep. No wonder he left the 99 for the one that went astray. The one came back. And if you don't happen to know the parable of the lost sheep, that story from the Bible, Dan has done a whole episode on digging deeper into that in episode 54, and we'll be sure to link that in the bio below. I also want to mention that when a child is thinking or remembering that they're going to miss you the next time you're apart from them, it's a great opportunity to teach them about God and to share his love. Just the other day, our son told me he was really going to miss me because we'd have to be apart for a little while. And when I say a little while, I'm talking like a grocery store run, not like overnight or anything crazy. Still, it was very sweet and a little bit funny, but... He knew that he was going to miss me. So I reminded him that God is always with him, right? And he's also always with me. So whenever he feels a hint of sadness or like something or someone is missing from the situation, we can always stop and pray to God and that I would do the same. Then we'd both be praying to God and we're connected by God and it's like we'd be together. Well, that just made him so happy when I said that. And you know what his response was? Because God connects us at the heart. What? Oh my gosh, this is such an amazing moment. It was so awesome to hear him say that. It is just such a blessing to have children in our lives that teach us the simplicity and the extent of God's love for us. And this is only scratching the surface. His love is so deep and so wide and so unconditional. This is just a small reminder of who he is and the love he has for each and every one of us. So to tie this all together, God wants you to call to him. He wants you to run back to him and share these moments with him. He wants to hear your heart. Of course he knows what you felt and what you've been going through, what you've experienced, but to actually hear from you that you love him and you yearn for him, that's our loving father's desire. He doesn't ever leave us, but if we turn or orient ourselves away from him, it makes that moment that we turn back to him even more amazing. It's not too late. It's never too late for God. Run to him with your arms wide open and he will be there to receive you. 
you may be thinking, but Stacy, how? It's been so long, or I don't know where to start. It's as simple as a conversation. Call up your Heavenly Father and tell him you miss him. All you have to do is start talking. He's always listening. And I know for a fact he's always thrilled to hear from his loving child, no matter how long it's been or what may have happened before. If you're a parent or caregiver of a child, you can kind of start to understand God's unconditional love and just think his love is even more than we could ever fathom. Now, I know today's message was a short and sweet one, so for today's verses to meditate on, I'm going to read through the scriptures with you, and of course, we'll note them in the description box below so you have it to refer back to as well. Our first verse to meditate on is the parable of the lost sheep, and again, Dan did an episode that we'll link in the description box below in case you haven't heard it yet. This is mentioned a couple places in the Bible. The first is from Luke chapter 15, verses 4 through 7. It's also available in the book of Matthew chapter 18, verses 12 to 14. I'll be going over Luke 15, 4 through 7, and I am reading from the English Standard Version. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, If he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine, fin the open country, and go after that one that is lost, until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. The second verse to meditate on is the parable of the prodigal son. And this is from the book of Luke, chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. And I'm reading from the English Standard Version here as well. And he said, There was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, A severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven, and before you I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring the fattened calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now he's found. And they all began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants over and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him, but he answered his father, Look, these many years I have served you, and I never disobeyed your command, yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. 
But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. I also have some questions for you today to reflect on. And the first question is, have you ever told God how much you love him? Maybe even how much you've missed him? How did it make you feel in your relationship with God when you told him? Question two, meditate on a parent's love, whether your own parent's relationship with you and or your relationship with your child. Does relating that love to God's love for you change your understanding of that relationship with him? And question three, what steps can you take today to focus more on being in Christ instead of doing things to try to be a quote unquote better Christian? As always, Dan and I want to thank you so much for joining in and listening to this podcast. You are all a blessing to us, and we are so thankful to be one in Christ together as one big happy family. Head over to our website to check out our other episodes, reach out to us via email or live chat, or submit a prayer request for yourself or a loved one. We love hearing from you guys, so just feel free to jump on there and reach out to us. Make sure to look out for our next episode, too, to celebrate Resurrection Sunday or Easter where Dan digs even deeper into God's love for us and how he's always with us. It's going to be a great one. And now I invite you to join me in prayer. Please take your preferred and safe prayer posture and let's talk to God. Heavenly Father, our Daddy, we love you. We've missed you so much since the last time we talked. Even if it was this morning, an hour ago, or even possibly years ago, we've missed our relationship with you since then. We're so thankful to have you as our parent, who loves us unconditionally outside of space, time, and circumstances. We desire to grow closer to you each and every moment of each and every day. Please send your Holy Spirit to guide us in our relationship with you so we can focus on being who you created us to be in this life, in this world, and at this time. We pray for others to see you as our loving Father as well, and ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <music>